Hello, everybody. <laughs> now, now we've started it. So we have both Facebook and YouTube going. Um, and so this week. This week. We're talking about. We're sticking with the kids theme, parenting theme. Yeah. No, I don't believe we have any hair maintenance tips this week. No, no. Just mostly, mostly just talking about parenting still. Yeah. So we had two two main topics that we were wanting to hit on. Yes. And just just touch on. We don't not too far in depth with most. No. Well, we've been going a little over. We're hoping to shoot for like twenty minutes with these, and so last week we were more closer to like thirty some. Before that, though, it was almost an hour. So we're getting close. We're trying to whittle it down. Yes. So. But whittler. still have it be things that are valuable for people. Worthwhile. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this week, first topic, authority. So we're thinking about things like spiritual things that you need to teach your kids as parents. So so lessons they need to learn from, from us as parents that really teach them about also God. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we were kind of thinking, oh, you know, there's a lot of parents out there that want to be their kids' friends and all that type of stuff. Well, at some you know in um in the right context that's good um however um i think for the most part this culture is missing out on the teaching kids about the authority that god has over our lives so again we get saved he is our savior and our lord, lord which means no is not a proper answer for us to use to him so we only get to say yes um, but anyhow, so so uh, so making sure that our kids understand authority um, is is a lesson they need to learn from us. <clears throat> yes, for sure. And also, um, you know, we mentioned we touched on really briefly a little bit last week about the hierarchy that the Lord has set in place, and so using, you know, real life in the home examples of what that looks like and making sure that we have a good biblical hierarchy set mm -hmm. up in our home um, instead of like Dave mentioned, you know, wanting to be our kids' friends all the time. Um, and certainly there, you know, potentially is a time and a place and we for sure do not want our children to um, look upon us or have that relationship viewed with just an authoritarian only mm -hmm, viewpoint mm -hmm. so there's no um real relationship there it's all just very um authoritarian and almost militaristic style mm -hmm. situation so that's not what we're shooting for right right so uh so uh, um so we're gonna kind of bounce around a little bit with this so uh, reasons why authority or teaching your kid about authority is good is uh, because they do need to learn about it. There's going to be authority all, all throughout their lives. So, you know, the very first authority they have is us as parents um, who love them, you know, this much. <laughs> right. And then the next authority that they're going to bump into is the, the teachers, which loves them this much. And then after that is the what? Maybe policemen after that. Then you got policemen, I mean, which love know. them this much, and then if you you still messing up, the judge that loves them this much, and then if they still not learn about authority, then the warden who loves them, they, right? So, so that's kind of the thing. They are going to learn this at some point. What we want to do is make sure that they are learning these lessons while they're in our home, because we love them. We want what's best for them, and and so and we want to make that that lesson as smooth as possible. Yes. Well, and that. You know, of course, it's going to depend on each situation because, mm -hmm. like, we homeschool, so there's no um, authority at school, you know, because we're not sending them to public school, that type of thing. Um, you know, so for our children, there have been different places where they've learned to respect and honor people in authority. So, like, at church, you know, Sunday school class, youth group, different mm -hmm. situations like that. Coaches. Co yeah, coaches. We've been part of homeschool groups, and so there's been different people in positions of authority, um, you know, over them. And so also now our kids are old enough that they have jobs outside of the home 
And so they are having to, um, you know, have a boss that is, or a manager that's in a position of authority over them. So kind of walking through um, challenges at a workplace has been mm -hmm. a new thing for us. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's um, fun. And so, so that's been interesting to navigate. Um, so do we want to tell the story? I mean, so, so one of our children kind of... was having issues with the boss, and uh, and it's um I wouldn't say it's exactly the same as like some of the issues that we've had with our bosses or me me personally, um so but but we told uh so so the so the way that we kind of worked it out with with that child is all like okay so first of all go to the supervisor you have the issue with. And it had it had to do with you know when does this when do, is she allowed to get off work and that type of stuff. I don't know. Person, that the individual. Yeah, because it's people. Right, really right. So, it, so, so we're we're trying to keep the names out of it, you know, protect uh, protect the innocent. Um, so anyhow, um, and and I know I've had an, uh, a similar issue to that. that you know, the the issue that we had was different. Than, than our kid who's working, you know, at, at a, you know, a starting wage job. Um, but I had an issue with a supervisor, an immediate supervisor. So, <clears throat> so the way that we, we kind of counseled her was that child was um, go, go to your immediate supervisor first and just calmly, rationally just say, hey, I, I, I need to talk with you um, in private. And, uh, you know, so what, when would be a good time? You meet, tell them what the issue is, and, you know, use the I messages when this happens, you know. So first you state the facts, makes me feel this way, or I'm not sure, I don't understand, explain to me yes. type of stuff. <clears throat> and then if there's, a, and then if that makes it better, cool. I mean, it's Matthew 18, 15-ish. Yes. Um, and then if that doesn't work, if we don't have a change, we, we, we haven't figured out where we can settle this together, then you go to that person's boss. Yes. Okay. Um, and again, this isn't like out of the Bible. This is what, what I think should work. And it's what, what, what I've tried before and what, what that individual. person, individual, yeah. had ha tried as well. And so far, it seems to be working good. So, so anyhow, you go to the your immediate supervisor, you go to their supervisor. And then if you still have no change, you go back to that immediate supervisor again. And just say, hey, had this conversation, still no change, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, it, and then again, if you don't have a change after that, then you go back to their supervisor again. And if there's no change after that, it's, it's time to start thinking about putting in your two weeks. Yeah. So, well, and that was this, obviously that's this specific situation right. and that's, you know, how, how we kind of can helped her come to that conclusion. You know, first, obviously you're like, is this actually something that's happening or is mm -hmm. this just us maybe being sensitive, overly sensitive, or um, has it been a hard day? And so we just were like, came home crying because of that or what? Um, and then also along this process, you're asking yourself, is this a job that I feel the Lord still has for me? Mm -hmm. Is this a job that I still want to be working at? All of those things, or is this something that this may be potentially a time when the Lord's uh, calling me to step away from this. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you're not going to encourage people to just, they have one bad day at their job and they're just going to quit. That's not what we're advising here mm -hmm. either. <laughs> um, so, so in that case, so far things are still going good. It's been, I think, a few weeks at oh, least yeah, since those conversations or that conversation took place. Yep. Um, I know with my situation, I, I walked through all four steps and my letter of resignation was written. Yep. So because there, there was no change, there was no give and take, There's no, there was no, we're going to work with you, see where you're coming <laughs> from. It was more of a just uh, suck it up, dude. I'm like, hey, yeah, no. Yeah. I've got a piece of paper for you and... Well, um, and with always with prayer and all of that mm -hmm. kind of stuff alongside of the process. Right. Um, I know growing up for me, my situation was different and or different than yours, mm -hmm. similar to the one that our child is walk has been walking through. And so there was change. And so it was um, helpful. And I ended up having a really great relationship with mm. that supervisor. Um, 
So anyhow, so, yes. Just a quick illustration. Quick illustration. Yep, yep. So uh, a couple of things. Now the first two is uh, we actually got from a dude named John Rosemond, mm -hmm. right? So he's writ written some um, parenting books, parenting books, raising children books. Yep. Right. So his first one um, is kids need to hear the word no more. So and one of the illustrations he used is he he said, okay, as adults, write down everything you want and make sure there's 10 to 20 things on there everything you just want and he says you know and then after you got that list he says now cross off all the things that are never going to happen the the lamborghini the you know whatever it might be cross off all the ones that aren't going to happen and he says for most adults there's like 10 percent left you just got a couple of things left he says now if you do that same thing with your kid it'll be reversed they'll have 90 percent that they actually get and he says, now, now here's the thing, though, is that that is not reality. You know, as an adult, you're only going to get 10% of what you want. Your kid's going to get 90%. So the way they're being raised is not reality. Yeah. So he says, so it, for that example there, it's, you know, they need to hear no more. Mm -hmm. um, and every time they ask for something they want, you have to make sure that 50% of the time you are actually saying no. Um which kind of leads us to the next one. Um, and this is from John Rosemont again. Because I said so. So I know there's, you know, since the 1990s or whatever, oh, you can't say that to your kids. You can't say because I said so. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So so here's the thing. It's, it's like, you know, there's certain things in the Bible that we're supposed to do or not supposed to do. Yep. Um, we don't have to know why they're good or why they're bad. We just need to be obedient to it. Yeah. And so that's what, what we're asking our kids. And I know one of the examples, I'm pretty sure this was John Rosemond that put it in there, but I, I could be off, is I lost my train of thought. Why don't you go? Do you have anything? Because I said so. Um, well, the last one you did, too. Um, no, because I said so. More on that. I don't have anything on because I said oh, so. Oh, Okay. I mean, I, I guess I feel like um, it's, it's very similar to what you mentioned. You know, we don't always have to know why mm -hmm. um, to be obedient to what the Lord has called us to do. And so when in, in our lives with our children, there's constantly this well why well why well why my first response as a mother is i called you to be to do this to be obedient first the first thing is for you to be obedient and then if you're at the age and all of those kinds of things for me to have a conversation with you about that later i'm happy to do that as long as you're being obedient first um, and so I think sometimes with me, and maybe I'm off on this, the opportunity to have a conversation can sometimes come when you're responding properly in obedience. And I don't know, like sometimes I wonder how often that happens with the Lord. Like he's mm -hmm. called us to obedience first. And so when we're walking in obedience, then he's willing to, you know, sometimes shed a little bit more light on our situation. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Obedience yeah. first. And, and the other thing with this is so like clean your room. Why? And obviously there's lots of reasons why you shouldn't clean your room. Like <laughs> I'm just going to get it dirty again. Blah, blah, blah. Right. <laughs> Nobody goes in there. Whatever. We're not having this conversation now. I asked you. And, which was code for you have to yeah. um, clean your room. Now, if you want to have that conversation, that's fine. Now's not the time, though. Yeah. When you're done cleaning your room, feel free to come on back. Let's make sure and have some time. And, and I might be busy. So feel free to say, hey, when can we have an opportunity to yes. discuss why I needed to clean my room, why it was important to do it right then at that at that moment, um, all that type of stuff. But... The, the, th the real thing with this is that most of the time they're asking why 
They're stalling for time. They want to wear you down. He, because here's the thing. It's obvious. Like, as an adult, I already know why. Like, I don't have to ask that. If somebody asks me to do something, I just go ahead and do it because I already know why. Yeah. So here's the thing is that if they're to the age to where they can understand why they should do something, then they don't need to ask the question <laughs> because they already know it. Yeah. So pretty much anytime they ask why, it's all like, well, either you already know and you're just stalling for time or you're too immature to understand, mm. in which case me explaining it to you is a waste of my breath because you're just going to keep, but what about, but what about, but what about, but what about, what about you go ahead and get your room cleaned up or else I can go ahead and get something out and we can have a different type of conference, <laughs> one that involves leather. So, but, but anyhow, so, so saying no, because it, it, it it gets them to understand they don't get everything they mm -hmm. want. You're the one in charge. Now, I, I think back in the olden days, like this was easier because there was less just money floating around. It seems like, you know, kids pretty much get everything they want because the parents can afford yes. most of everything that they want. Yes. Whereas like Laura Ingalls Wilder, I mean, like that time, it's all like, dude, it doesn't matter what you want. Go you, find a corn cob to dress up. Yeah, so you ain't getting a doll or whatever. You're just going to have to figure it out. We just, it isn't available, and if it was, we wouldn't have the money for it anyhow. Yeah. So, whereas now we need to be a lot more, like, in, in the front. Intentional. Intentional. Yes. About what we say yes to and what we say no to. Yes. Um, well, and the other thing, too, um, it, so kind of encapsulating this and reminding you all these are generalizations. Yes. And this isn't how it's gone with each of our children. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely have have had children who ask why or have kind of tested that boundary more than others. So when I say boundary, you will have children, even though we have stated when we ask a child to do something, first is obedient, you know, first time obedience is expected. Um, and we're not budging on that, you will have some kids that are like, well, would you budge, would you budge, would you budge? And they'll keep testing that. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's important to be on the same page mm -hmm. and decide how you're going to respond. Mm -hmm. You know, no, you still have to clean your room. You know, we are going to have that conversation later. Um, but this room needs to be cleaned or this task I've asked you to do needs to be done. Mm -hmm. There, there's been times when, when the kid has finished and they've wanted that conversation because yep. there was something else going on that I wasn't aware of. Yep. They were totally obedient. They, <laughs> they, you know, they did say, hey, how about, and I said, no, 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 no. Yep. Um, and for whatever reason, then they come back and it's all like, all right, so here's what was going on behind the scenes. You may or may not have known. Hey, I apologize. I didn't know. Or it doesn't matter because I told you to do it yesterday wow. and I told you. We're doing the adult thing. You have until 8 p.m. yesterday to have it done. That never got done. I'm sorry you were in the middle of a video game. Right. But that's on you. Yeah, oh, I know, Dad. Yeah, that, that, that was on me. You're right. Yeah. So, um, anyhow. But do make sure that you leave the door open for that. Um, totally. So, it's, it's supper time, right before bed, whatever time it is. But make sure if you just say, obedient now, we'll talk. You come back and you... Dude, half the time, they never come back. Well, they don't care. Yes. They just wanted to get out of the job. Well, and one thing that we have done, too, to kind of create some cell phone, cell phone free time every single day is, you know, make sure that we are putting our cell phones away at between this time and this time. Um, so there's another tip for you. If you want to... Uh, like make yourself available and create a time to have conversations with your children. Make sure that you have a cell phone free time established in your home. Um, and the other thing we do is we'll sometimes, we have a landing in our upstairs and it's pretty big. We can all, our whole family can sit there. Um, and so I'll just sometimes go sit there with a blanket and a pillow and a book or something. And that way, if any of the kids want to chat or whatever, mm -hmm. I'm right there ready to chat. Um, and it's just a book for fun. It's not like I'm trying to learn anything anyways. So, mm -hmm. you know, I can stop at any time. So, yep. 
Uh, well, the, the last thing we had on our list for authority, and there's a ton of stuff out there. Uh, so uh, using uh, Mr. or Mrs. in front of the name of an adult. So I, I know for me, in certain contexts, I'm Mr. Dow, and in other contexts, I'm Mr. Dave. And either one really doesn't bother me, but it's without the Mr. I'm fine with Dow. But, but it's uh, just Dave? No, no, you're, you're much too short to refer to me as just Dave. Um, I'm, I can be Mr. Da Mr. Dave, Coach Dow, Uncle Dave. I, I can be all these other things, but to you, I'm not Dave. And, and again, part of this is, is that we're trying to get our kids to understand authority. Mm -hmm. And so with that, it's the authority of Christ. Yep. And if you think you on the same level as a deity, um, you, you got your, your brain mixed up. Um, so I do think that the language that, that we, I want to say, force our kids to use, uh, helps put that in perspective in, in their brains. They're, go ahead. No. Well, sorry to interrupt. I was you rambling right anyhow. The word. Um, but one way that we, that I have found that works really well for me to reinforce that with our children is I will call the other individual by the name that my child should be referring to them as. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, there are children, you know, in an interaction with Dave, I'm going to say, you know, Susan, let's go talk to Mr. Dave. Mm -hmm. Because that's who Susan is going to call him. Mm -hmm. Or that's what the name she is going to call him or that she should call him. Right. Um, so we used to lead Awana at our church back out in Washington. And so that was a um, expectation that we just set forth in mm -hmm. the club Mr. Dave, Miss Becky, mm -hmm. all of that kind of thing. And it was really funny. One time, one of the young men didn't know that we were married. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is a cute story. Little, I don't mean, how old do you think he was? Like eight? No, oh, not even. Maybe no. six. The, the, no, he was like four or five. Okay. Anyways, and he went home after Awana one night. And he's like, Mom, I saw Mr. Dave and Miss Becky kissing. Oh, Are you guys still there? <laughs> yeah. So the dude went home, said, hey, mom, do you know Mi Mr. Dave? Yeah. Do you know Miss Becky? I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah. So like, I saw them kissing. <laughs> and that's when she said, it's okay. They're married. Oh, phew. Yeah. It was very cute. I don't know how long this is going to work, you guys. Well, just, you can put it down lower. Oh, yeah. Just try it down there. Hey, there we go. There we go. Um, so that was pretty funny. Um, but anyway, so we had set forth um, that expectation at Awana. And, you know, there have been a couple times, I think, that we've had to help kids. But although we actually had, that's just annoying. I'm just going to go like that. There we go. Okay. Um, so one of Dave's would be great uncle or uncle? I don't know which story you're talking about. It's half the second time. It's over. <laughs> uncle Merle. Uncle when Merle. We were, when we were in Oregon. Um, came to Dave and because our children asked to be excused from the table. This is another one. Um, they don't just get to get up and wrangle around. We're sitting at the table because our, you know, supper time is not only for nourishment, obviously, mm -hmm. um, but the purpose of it is for the family to kind of reconnect in the evening. And so understanding that is the purpose. So we talked a little bit about purpose, I think our first week. Um, and so understanding the purpose behind something is so important. And so for us, one of the purposes that we've established for eating supper together as a family is that we can kind of talk about each other's days, mm -hmm enjoy each other's company, all of those kinds of things. And so um, our children, when they were very small, excuse me, dad, can I be excused from the table? And so we were at a family reunion and so they were sit seated at a table all together and they asked to be excused. And then when Dave said they could, 
they were like, yeah. thank you. And mm -hmm. they took their plates and they took care of all of their things. Right. So this is just helping them learn to be, you know, yep. godly young men yeah. and women. And I found myself too, when a younger person would call me by my first name is I just correct them. And I don't, I'm not a snot about it or no. anything. It's all like, Hey Dave, can you blah, blah, blah. I said like, well, I'm, I'm Mr. Dave. Yeah. Or I'm Uncle Dave or whatever it might be. Right. And and they normally just, oh, okay. Yeah. Mr. Dave, can I? Uh, so it, it, it doesn't have to be a big deal. And then we also correct our own kids with it. Yeah. Um, with that too. So the, the other thing I kind of wanted to talk about too was how, how do you teach your kids about who actually does have authority? Right? Because, and there's certain, mm. uh, I mean, there, there's certain places to where like a teacher might have authority but they can only ask so much right they can't just say hey go murder or whatever you know i'm it, something I, i'm just coming up outlandish. with something crazy yeah. uh, yes outlandish so j just so that way you know it, it's kind of that way so we we mm -hmm. do have to talk about you know at some point and of course this is more of like a middle school teenager type conversation to have it's you know you know, we talk about laws, good laws, bad laws. Some people say bad laws you don't actually have to abide by. Um, I know in Christian circles, it's, you know, if, if, you have, if you have a law or something the government tells you you can or can't do, but it contradicts God's law, then that's going to, you know, we, we go by God's law. So that, that's something else to kind of bring in to the picture as they get older when we're talking about authority. So, you know, you have younger kids, it's going to have different lessons than your older kids who have started to think, you know, abstractly and that type of stuff. Yes. Well, and that um, was a great conversation for us to have in 2020 because there were all these rules mm -hmm. saying what things you had to do. Mm -hmm. And so it was a great opportunity to have a conversation or many conversations with our children about why or why not, mm -hmm. is this beneficial, is this helpful, all of the different ways you can evaluate said mm -hmm. thing. And so then we're allowing them to, you know, evaluate that alongside mm -hmm. of us. And so then as a family, we just decided what our response was going to be. Um, and so that way, when we would be out shopping and someone would, you know, say a comment about <clears throat> what are, what not face covering we didn't have on. <laughs> um, we would just keep on shopping and we were very polite about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a great way to show our children what it looks like to walk forward boldly, mm -hmm. but in truth um, and doing what is best for our bodies and how to take care of our bodies well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we had a lot of conversations about what, what makes a law and what makes a request so there, there, there's differences and requests you, you you know they're they're asking and you have a choice whereas laws it's uh, a little bit different uh, you know again assuming that that law doesn't contradict uh, God's law or yeah. God's commandments or you know however we want to look at it there yeah well and it was great to be able to have a conversation too about people who had been misinformed mm -hmm. um, who were being asked to enforce. Um, what they thought were laws. And so it was a great opportunity for us to have conversations with them and say, well, actually, this is not a law. Mm -hmm. um, this is not something that you can require me to do. Misinformation. Um, yes. And so it was a great way to kind of walk all of that out with our children watching because mm -hmm. we weren't yelling, you know, we weren't screaming, mm -hmm. we weren't angry or any of those things. We were just having a conversation much like you would at coffee or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so it was, great great opportunity mm -hmm. and there were times when we kind of pushed it a little bit and there's other times it's all like all right there's the door i'm just gonna use it yeah you know and and it was great conversations it's all like this is a battle worth fighting this isn't one um but but again so so uh, again making sure our kids understand authority uh who the main authority is uh mm -hmm. why we do want to listen to that Yes. Uh, it, and, and again, it's we don't have to understand all of the commands that, that we've been given personally. They don't have to understand those either. Mm -hmm. When it comes down to whether or not you should put a fork into an outlet, you don't have to understand how the ions flow in electricity. 
Okay, that you may never wrap your brain around that. Yes. But still, I'm not going to allow you to do that as your parent. So, yeah. and uh, and of course, we can back that up with uh, discipline. <laughs> yes. So, we do actually have a list tonight. Mm -hmm. So, we upgraded from last week. Last week, there was no list. This week, we had a list. And we're out of time. So, so yes. And we're out of time. So, until next week, if you think of comments, questions, a topic you would like us to cover, mm -hmm. I think we have another week or two that we'd love to talk about, like children, raising children, um, different things. Let us know. Yeah. Drop it in the comments. Yeah. <laughs>